Hi, welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to apply dbscan clustering algorithm to the given data points to form the clusters. In this case, uh, we have been given 12 data points, P1 to P12. Given this particular data points, we need to apply the dbscan algorithm to form the clusters with the minimum points equal to 4. That means uh, each cluster should contain minimum 4 points and the distance between each data point within a cluster should be less than or equal to 1.9 here. Now the next question comes in front of us is uh, how to calculate the distance between these data points. In this case, I am going to use the Euclidean distance formula to calculate the distance between uh, two data points. Let us assume that uh, A x1 y1, B x2 y2 are the two data points. The distance between these two data points is given as square root of x2 minus x1 bracket square plus y2 minus y1 bracket square. Now we need to use this particular formula to calculate the distance between each data point. Once you calculate the distance, uh, we will try to form the clusters. Now these are the data points given to us. The minimum points within a cluster should be 4 and uh, the distance between each data point within a cluster should be less than or equal to 1.9 in this case. Now I will calculate the distance between P1 to P1. That is, uh, the distance between P1 to P1 is always equal to 0. Now we need to calculate the distance between P1 to P2. So this is P1 and this is P2. The distance between P1 to P2 is, here it is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. So square root of x2 minus x1 bracket square, that is nothing but 4 minus 3 bracket square, plus y2 minus y1 bracket square, that is nothing but 6 minus 7 bracket square. So once you solve that equation, you will get 1.41 here. Similarly, I need to calculate the distance from P1 to P3. That is nothing but uh, x1, y1 in this case is 3, 7. x2, y2 is 5, 5 here. That is nothing but square root of 5 minus 3 bracket square plus 5 minus 7 bracket square here. Once you solve that equation, you will get the distance as 2.83. Similarly, I need to calculate the distance from P1 to P4, P5 and so on here. Once you calculate the distance from P1 to all other data points, Next thing is to calculate the distance from P2 to other data points. Now there is no need to calculate the distance from P1 to P2 to P1 because we have already calculated the distance from P2 to P1 that is equal to 1.41. So this is not required to calculate here. Next uh, P2 to P2 that is uh, equal to 0. Now we calculate the distance from P2 to P3. This is uh, this is P2 and this is P3. So the square root of x2 that is uh, 5, x1 is 4, so 5 minus 4 bracket square plus y2 is uh, 5 here, y1 is 6, so 5 minus 6 bracket square. So once you solve this equation, you will get the distance as 1.41. Similarly, we need to calculate the distance from uh, p2 to p4, p2 to p5 and so on. Once you calculate the distance from p2 to all other data points, we need to calculate the distance from p3 to all other data points and so on. So this is how the distances look like once you calculate the distance from P1 to P12 to all other data points here. Now once you calculate the distance uh, from one data point to all other data points, the next uh, question comes in front of us is to identify the nearest data points for each of these 12 data points. So these are uh, the distances we have already calculated. From P1, we will try to identify the nearest data point. So first we will start horizontally and then we will start vertically here. So in this case, horizontally we have P1 to P1 distance that is equal to 0. So P1 will be a part of a P1 here. Now we will start vertically here. From P1 to all other data points, we will try to find the distance which is less than 1.9 here. So if you look at here, this 1.41 is less than 1.9 and this 1.41 is less than uh, 1.9 here. The meaning of this one is P2 and P10 are nearest to P1 here. So that is what I have written here to P1, P2 and P10 are nearest in this case. Now we will start with P2. As said earlier, we need to start horizontally first and then we need to check the minimum distance uh, that is uh, less than 1.9. Again, 1.41 is less than 1.9. The meaning is P1 is nearest to P2 here. P2 to P2 is 0. The meaning of this one is uh, P2 is nearest to P2. Once you are done with horizontally, we need to start with vertically. We need to check the minimum distance. This is the one more minimum distance we have that is uh, 1.41 which is less than uh, 1.9. If you look at other values, again we have one more value that is 1.41 is less than 1.9 here. The meaning of this one is to this particular P2, P1 is the nearest one. 
as well as uh, P3 is the nearest one and P11 is the nearest one. So that is what I have written here. So once you are done with P2, we will start with P3. For this particular P3, horizontally, this 1.41 is uh, less than 1.9. The meaning is P2 is nearest. Now we will start with vertically. In this case, we have 1.41 here, which is less than 1.9. Uh, we don't have any other uh, data points which is less than uh, 1.9 the meaning of this one is for this particular p3 p2 is the nearest one as well as p4 is the nearest one so p2 and p4 are the nearest one now we will continue with p4 for this particular p4 horizontally this 1.41 is uh, less than 1.9 so p3 will be nearest value vertically if you look at this uh, p4 column we have 1.41 here and then uh, we don't have any uh, value which is less than uh, 1.9 which indicates that for p4 this p3 is uh, the nearest one and p5 is the nearest one here similarly we need to do it for p5 horizontally if you look at here this 1.41 is uh, less than 1.9 that means p4 is nearest to p5 that is the first one and if you look at this p5 column 1.41 is less than 1.9 1 is less than 1.9 1.41 is less than uh, 1.9 so for p5 first one is p4 that's the nearest data point p6 p7 and p8 are also nearest data points over here with the same note we need to calculate the nearest data points for p6 p7 p8 and so on so once you find the data, nearest data points looks something like this once you calculate uh, the nearest data points for each of these uh, 12 data points the next step is to identify the core border and noise data points so i will start with this particular p1 now for p1 we have two nearest data points that is p2 and p10 so total number of uh, data points in this case is including p1 we have three but three is less than minimum number of points that is four hence this particular p1 is called as a noise here now we will go with p2 including p2 we have four data points here four is equivalent to four that is minimum number of points hence it is called as a core data point Similarly, P3 and P4 are the noise here. P5 is the core and then P11 is a core because we have four data points remaining all are noise in this case. So we got one uh, uh, P2 core data point, P5 core data point and P11 core data point here. Now once you identify core and noise data points, next we need to check whether any of these noise data points are border data points. That is nothing but Sometimes this particular P1 is a noise right now, but P1 may be a border to the clusters or something like that. So in that case, we need to identify whether this noise data points are borders or what. So I will start with again P1 because P1 is a noise here. Now, if you want to say that P1 is a border data point, this P1 should be a part of any one of the core data points. So in this case, P2, P5 and P11 are the core data points. If P1 is the part of any of these particular core data point, it will be a border here. Now I will go with this particular P2. P1 is, uh, you can say that a part of this particular core, hence it will be called as a border in this case. Now I will consider P3. P3 is a part of again uh, the P2's uh, core data point, hence it is also called as border. Similarly, we need to check for each of these particular noise data points and then we need to write the border over here. Once you've done this particular thing, you can notice this particular P9. P9 remains uh, a noise here. The meaning of this one is P9 is not a part of any of these particular core data points over here. So in this case, we have P2 and then uh, P5 and P11 as the core data points. The meaning of this one is we will get three clusters centered at P2, P5 and P11 over here. We will try to draw those particular clusters now. First, I have drawn these particular data points on two dimensional space here. This is the data point one is here, data point two, three, four, and so on. Once you draw this particular thing, we need to draw the clusters. The first cluster is with respect to a core data point P2. P2 will be the center here and the remaining three data points will be around this particular P2 here. What are the data points? P1, P3, and P11. So this P1, uh, P2 is over here, P1, P3, P11 are the other data points in this particular cluster. So once you draw that particular cluster, it looks something like this. Coming back to the second cluster with respect to core point P5, P4, P6, P7 and P8 are another data points in this particular cluster. So P5 is the center here 
around this thing we will get the four data points here so once you draw the cluster it looks something like this coming back to the last uh, cluster with respect to, to p11 uh, core point we have p2 p10 and p12 here so 11 is the core data point p2 p10 and p12 are the other data points once you draw this uh, cluster it looks something like this finally we got uh, three clusters uh, with respect to, to db scan clustering algorithm for these uh, 12 data points they look something like this so this is how we can apply the db scan clustering algorithm to the given data points and then you can identify core data points border data points and noise data points and then you can form these particular clusters if you notice here uh, p9 is not a part of any of this particular cluster the meaning of this one is p9 is uh, uh, the noise or you can say that the outlier out of these particular 12 data points in this case I hope uh, you understood how can we apply this uh, db scan clustering algorithm to form the clusters. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.